Today's lecture continues our series on the cranial nerves, continuing on with cranial nerve number two. Cranial nerve number two is called the optic nerve. Now the optic nerve begins essentially at our eyeball and continues in through the optic canal and these two optic nerves join at the optic chiasm where they then branch once again and become the optic tracts where they continue on to the lateral geniculate body of the thalamus and from there they traverse all the way to the back in the visual cortex of the occipital lobe in the brain. Now, the optic nerve is a special sensory type of nerve and its function deals with our sense of vision. Now, the result of a lesion is termed a hemianopia or a bilateral or hemilateral blindness. Now, there are many different pathologies on what hemianopias are possible based on where the lesion is in the duration or the course of the optic nerve. So, looking at this diagram, we can see that we have here our eyes, and there are two different degrees from which each eye can receive light. So we have light coming from both our nasal and temporal visual fields. Our nasal would be on the medial aspects and our temporal on the lateral aspects. However, on the retina of each eye respectively, the temporal visual field stimulates the medial portion of the retinas, whereas the nasal visual field stimulates the lateral or temporal portion of each eye. So as we can see here, the medial portion of each retina continues on its optic nerve tract and in the optic chiasm crosses its fibers over into the contralateral optic tract, as we can see here on the other side as well in blue whereas the lateral aspects of the retina, here in red, continue on ipsilaterally, or on the same side of the eye that is being stimulated. So, as we can see from these few lesions that are being described, if we were to have a lesion across the optic nerve of, in this particular diagram, the right eye, Looking over here at our chart, the black demonstrates a lack of vision and a white unopposed vision. So if we were to have a lesion across the right optic nerve, this would result in a hemianopia that only affects the right eye. Whereas if we were to have a lesion here that only affected the lateral portion of the retina on the right eye, we would have an issue with the medial visual field on the right eye, seeing as where the light comes from that affects that visual field. If we were to have a lesion across the optic chiasm, this would obviously affect the two medial portions of the retinas of each eye. So, on the right eye, medial portion has uh, stimulation from the temporal visual field. So on the right eye, the lateral aspect would be affected, as well as on the left eye, its medial retinal visual field would be affected on the lateral side. Whereas if we have a lesion down here on the optic tract of the uh, right optic tract, we would have the lateral aspect of the right eye, its nasal visual field or medial aspect 
would be destroyed, whereas on the left eye, its medial retinal tract, which has stimulation from the temporal visual field, would affect the lateral aspect of the left eye. From this diagram, it is also of note that the optic nerves are not a part of the brain stem, yet again, like the olfactory nerve, lay on top or superior to it. And the optic nerve is the only of the cranial nerves which is actually considered to be a part of the central nervous system. So if you were to inspect the optic nerve microscopically, you would see oligodendrocytes instead of swan cells to have its myelination, as well as you would see meninges inside of the optic tract, canal, chiasm, and that is the optic nerve.